Well, that's going to take some time. Maybe you can start doing some of that stuff now. But all I'm saying is, these even if a permit is, you know, the, the green light is put up, it's not like they're going to catch you off guard. You're going to have months probably to review that DC permit for the first well. <clears throat> In the end, if a well, let's just say, okay, Ed, you're wrong on all that. Let's say if a well is drilled in your town. I don't have a crystal ball. I don't know. Maybe somehow, you know, the well comes in. It's not like you could put in a moratorium there and then deal with that one well as a non-conforming use. It's not the end of the world. All right, so I, all I'm saying is there's a lot of people out there saying, no, pass that moratorium now, man, because this is all these risks. Well, I don't see that many risks to begin with. But let's look at some of the other risks that you're doing by passing a, a ban or moratorium. The advocates of lo local zoning moratoriums are argue that the town's decision to pass a moratorium now will protect the status quo and protect you from having a well permitted and drilled <coughs> in the town. They, that, they argue that if you pass a moratorium now before the DEC issues drilling permits, there are very little risk to your town. They lead you to believe that your only risk at this point in passing a moratorium would be the risk of being sued in the same manner as the town of Dryden and the town of Middlefield. Being sued by a gas company or landowner owner to simply declare the moratorium that you put in place as illegal. They basically say that, look, the Middlefield decision and the, and, and the Dryden all they are is declaratory judgment actions. All they are are plaintiffs coming to the court saying, do they have the right to do that or not? That's all they're asking for. And I've seen some of the advocates of banning the moratorium say, look, they don't even claim damages. They don't even have them. Oh, yeah? I wouldn't make that assumption. Because the declaratory judgment is just simply asking the court, am I right on this law or not? If they come and say, I'm right, and the town's wrong, then I know I can sue for damages. So this is just like a set-up punch, potentially. It's not that you win it. The claim that there's no damages out there, well, that's kind of a stretch. They're just not asking for the damages yet. They state that your taxpayers and landowners and the gas companies that have leases have no damages. They even state that you're likely to find law firms out there that'll do, represent you and protect you on a pro bono basis. So don't worry about it. Somebody will come and help. I don't know, most attorneys I know don't come and help for free. There are many that believe that the advocates of the moratoriums are wrong. And here are some reasons why. Your town may, may, may be at risk to lawsuits brought by gas companies that hold leases in your town. Many of these leases are coming close to their expiration dates. Many of these leases in your town were leases that were gas companies came out five, six, seven years ago and took advantage of your 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 land the, the people that own land in your town. These leases are terrible. They don't protect them, the landowner nor do they protect the environment. So even for those people that don't have leases, number one is you all want those leases to go away. Because there's a, it, it, you know, it's equivalent of having a, you know, a trailer home in the middle of a neighborhood with multi-million dollar houses. Even though you didn't sign a, a lease on your property, if an environmental contamination occurs on the next property, it's still gonna have an impact on your property. So we need to get rid of these leases not only to protect the individual people that sign them, but to protect us all as a whole. Many of these leases are coming close to their expiration date. Some leases that will expire over the course of the next year or two contain what we call automatic extension provisions or options to renew. Where the gas companies have the right to renew the lease by making additional rental payments to the landowners, the same $5 an acre, to secure extensions of anywhere from three to five years. So we got these leases out there that the gas companies can get another three to five years by paying another $5 an acre. 
And remember, there's no environmental protections in those leases. There's all sorts of problems with them. If you pass a moratorium now, and if the state starts issuing permits later this year, if after that, in a year or two, it is determined by the courts that your town's moratorium is illegal, you are now opening the town up to potentially enormous lawsuits by those gas companies that could have obtained DEC permits, but lost it because you got in the way. Remember, starting in 2008 and 2009, gas companies were paying thousands of dollars an acre for delay rentals to secure leases. These damages can add up really quick. How many acres you got under lease in your town? Figure it out. Put that number in. Well, damages start getting, getting really ugly. Two. All right, so in the second one, the town's decision to pass a moratorium could also have unintended consequences on your taxpayers, landowners, that are trying to get out of these pro-gas company leases. If you put a ban or a moratorium, we all know that when the DEC, when the state of New York, put a moratorium on gas, all, they didn't do it like you got it. But most of the towns are saying, we want a moratorium on conventional wells, the regular wells that have been drilled in New York State for the last 80 years. We also want a ban on pipelines. We also want a ban on vertical or horizontal wells and hydrofracking. We want it all. So you're not only are you talking about damages on leases that cover the horizontal, you're covering the whole ball of wax. And, and if you're planning on zoning out large interstate pipelines, you should have your village attorney look at FERC and see whether that's within your jurisdiction. But many of these leases that are coming up for these landowners, they've got, some of them have a month or two, and they're going to be gone. They're going to be over. And those landowners are going to be, by the grace of God, they're going to be able to terminate those leases, unless you guys put a moratorium in place. Because if you put a moratorium in place, then you just play in the hands of the gas company. Because now the gas company can claim, oh, you know, we had promised you that we were going to drill a well and do that, but guess what? We can't. It's impossible. We don't have to come good on that part of the promise because everybody tells us we can't even do it. And then they say, you know, in your lease there, look at the, the clause that says force majeure. You know, that part that says if there's a law or something that, that prevents us from doing what we agreed to do, that we're going to be forgiven as long as that law is in place. So by pay, passing a ban or a moratorium in your town, that force majeure clause in these oil company pro-oil company leases is going to rear its ugly head and it's going to prevent the gas, the landowners from getting out. So you're just ensuring that your, your property owners in your town are going to be stuck with these bad leases. Now people say, well, that, you know, the same thing happened when the state passed the, the moratorium. But there the gas companies were challenged because that moratorium didn't ban everything. It just banned large volume hydrofrack. In other words, anything over 80,000 gallons. So as an attorney representing a landowner, I can come in and go, well, Mr. Gas Company, you're right. Oh, so you claim that the force majeure clause comes in here because of the state moratorium. I say no, it doesn't. Because there's a lot of other things you still can do. You could have done seismic testing. You could have put in vertical wells. You could have done all sorts of stuff. All they told you you couldn't do was high volume Hydrofracking. So therefore, you can make a good argument and that those cases are being litigated in the state of New York right now. And it could be very easy that the gas companies are going to lose those cases and the, gas, and the landowners will get out of their bad leases. But if we put a ban on everything, <laughs> you're playing right in the hands of the gas companies. And I don't mean to make it sound like gas companies are bad. Let's just be perfectly clear here. They're not the enemies. Unless you're independently wealthy and can afford a $4 million well on your property, you need the gas companies. But when you sit down and negotiate with a gas company, you have to be businessmen. You have to negotiate with them. They're going to ask for all the risks to be put on your side of the table. 
Obviously, as an attorney representing landowners, I try to take those risks and say, no, why don't you hold those big gas company? But after the deal is done and signed, gas companies are my friend. If they don't make money, me, as a landowner, I don't make money. If they don't make money, the state of New York doesn't make money. I mean, if they don't make money, we continue to import foreign oil. If they don't make money, we continue to have our boys and girls sent to the Middle East to catch bullets. <clears throat> if they don't make money, we continue to have nuclear power and strip mines for uranium. If they don't make money, then we continue to have ash disposal lagoon for the, the burnt ash from our coal plants. We continue to have acid rain. This is a big issue, guys. I don't claim to have all the answers, but let's at least look at the data before we jump on one train or another. We're, we're scientists. I mean, if, if we can get uh, our, we have the faith in our scientists and stuff to put us on the moon. We should have faith in our people to be able to safely extract this resource. That, from an environmental standpoint, is a lot cleaner than the, the current forms of energy we currently use. Let's, let's at least give it a fair shot. So, you know, number two is, if you start passing bans in moratorium, you're going to hurt your very landowner. It is also possible that the town will pass a moratorium now, and if the DEC proves permits later this year, and then in a year or two the court finds that the, finds that the town moratoriums are invalid, there could be landowners who sue the town for lost delay rentals, rent renewal bonuses, sign-on bonuses, and possibly also for the loss of royalty payments. So now you got not only a gas company suing you, now you got landowners suing you. We talked about before, you could have other towns suing you. Finally, I mean, this is the bottom line for me. Let's say you win it all, because you got the best guns, attorneys. You got it in the bag. The New York State highest court says, you know what, Towns? You have the right to regulate oil and gas. You win. I wouldn't be jumping for joy, <laughs> because that's when it gets even uglier. How the big monster comes out of the box. You know, the federal constitution that says that, you know, property, life, liberty is protected for all of us. Regulatory takings comes up. Now you got lawsuits from gas companies, landowners, all sorts of people over a taking. So finally, even if we assume that the town's moratoriums are lawful, I'm afraid that the town's exposure to litigation associated legal fees will not end there. Rather, the wind will only spawn regulatory total takings, there's a distinction, litigation that could take several years to be decided and cost potentially millions of dollars in legal fees and damages to your taxpayers. And at the very least, I suggest that before you pass a moratorium, Look into whether your town's insurance policy covers these risks. Now, you think I'm joking? This was a headline I found a few days ago. Delaware County supervisors want $81.3 billion for local fracking ban. We know that under the Supplemental Generic Environmental Impact Statement, that people that own property in Delaware County have been told you can't lease your property because we need to protect our water for New York City. Well, that's fine. If they want to do that, then the state should pay those people further rights, and the taxpayers in New York should ante up and protect that water. That's fine. I don't have a problem with that. But you know what it's going to cost? They're saying this is the, the county supervisor are going to be what are intending to sue the state of New York and the city of New York City. And they're asking for 81, they're contemplating soon, and they're gonna, they're contemplating asking them for $81.3 billion. And they're gonna give them 30 years to pay it off, so they got some time. That factors in, there's, there's approximately 250,000 acres that would be impacted. Well, if you do the math, 
that comes out to be $325,200 per acre. And, and a lot of people say, oh, that's astronomical. I have clients in Pennsylvania that have 100 acres of land that the gas company will produce $43 million on the Marcellus alone. And they get anywhere from 50, you know, at the, all the current, back in the envelope calculation, is they're probably going to make two, three million dollars at a minimum, all the way up to six million dollars per hundred acres. So we're not talking these damages are out of place, guys. They're going to be huge. And my final word, word is, why would you want to sub subject your town to these legal bills? You know, you've already got two towns soon. How many plaintiffs do you need? Those court's decisions will be decided. This is all about the advocates of bans and moratoriums. This is not about your town passing bans. This is so that they can go to the governor and say, look, we got 600 towns out of 900 that passed bans. They're trying to create publicity and, and change this by political. And what they're doing is they're, they're having you guys open your purse strings, your taxpayers' purse strings, to foot the bill. I think it's great. I mean, think about it. A little group of people are, are going around getting the town boards to open up the taxpayers' purse to put on their agenda. I mean, that's great. I, I wish I could get a gig like that. That's um, basically all I have to say on the issue. I'm more than happy to answer.